Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Biblecast. We're so glad that you're here today. You're in the right place. You're making an investment in your spiritual health today, and that is awesome. And we are continuing our Advent journey as we look forward to the coming of Jesus and honoring his birth in the Christmas season. Today we're going to be looking at Jesus, and he is the defender of the weak. We're going to go into Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and 18 and 19 this morning, so you can get ready for that. And as you're hopping on, the team is here to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests or any need at all, put those in the comments on whatever platform you are joining on today, and the team will be there to pray for you. And of course, always follow us on Facebook, subscribe to that YouTube channel so you can be notified anytime we go live and we're looking forward to so many things this week here at trinity fellowship you know who's this jesus week two is coming up and also first wednesday family and worship and prophetic night is happening tomorrow at each of our campuses and so please make plans to attend that with your whole family and let's get into the presence of god together but for right now why don't you grab your hot beverage of choice this morning cheers and cheers to you and let's dive into psalm 72. so it starts off saying Give your love of justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Help him judge your people in the right way. Let the poor always be treated fairly. May the mountains yield prosperity for all, and may the hills be fruitful. Help him to defend the poor, to rescue the children of the needy, and to crush their oppressors. Now, this is a Psalm of Solomon. So this is King Solomon, David's son, who is writing this psalm and so his he opens with a request you know give your love of justice to the king O god and he's he's making a request of himself as the king but then soon you we can see that in this psalm it turns to a messianic prophecy and so he is making requests of the king but that solomon ultimately knows that he as a man cannot fulfill that it will take a messiah to fulfill these things help him judge your people in the right way let the poor always be treated fairly may the mountains yield prosperity for all and may the hills be fruitful help him to defend the poor to rescue the children of the needy and to crush crush their oppressors and we know that this is what jesus came to do that he leads with righteousness he is the king who reigns with righteousness and justice first with compassion of course but first in the right order is righteousness and justice and that's exactly what the psalm is speaking to absolutely and even though we don't see the psalm uh quoted in the new testament it has some of the very same parallels as isaiah 11 1 through 5 and 60 through 62 that and those are messianic as well and so what we see as you mentioned is once again we see righteousness as the standard for justice and judgment not merely what's seen or heard as we looked at isaiah yesterday mm -hmm. and the prayers longing for the righteous justice that comes through the messiah ultimately so it's looking to the hope the future hope that we see and that's of course what we're celebrating is the hope that comes down with the birth of jesus and righteousness then is the primary virtue of governance here that we see solomon uh, asking for um, for himself but also asking for in the the in what the Messiah brings, that righteousness as the primary virtue of governance, even before compassion. Righteousness dominates the whole front end of this of this psalm. And so Solomon understands something, I believe, through the Holy Spirit. He understands that God's righteousness will bring compassion. God's righteousness will bring justice. God's righteousness will bring what his people need because righteousness the first part of that word even right standing that we are made for right standing with god and when we walk out our right standing all the things that god intended flourish mm -hmm. so the the peace of the people mentioned here jesus said the as the perfect governor and the one to be trusted in authority of this life will bring justice to the poor who are overlooked save the children of the needy and break in pieces the oppressor and those oppressors are both internal and external domination so we'll pick up we'll see that picking up here in verse four you know and i love he says you know crush the oppressor <laughs> you know here's the oppressor oppressor the enemy but jesus crushes the enemy underneath his feet which is awesome all right verse five May they fear you as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon remains in the sky. Yes, forever. May the king's rule be refreshing like spring rain on freshly cut grass, like the showers that water the earth. May all the godly flourish during his reign. May there be abundant prosperity. 
And so here we start of may, may they fear you. May they, may they fear you as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon remains in the sky, yes, forever. May they know that you are Lord. May they know that you are uh, that you are righteousness and that when we live according to righteousness we we not only enjoy you know, internal harmony but we enjoy the prosperity the peace the blessing that comes from being in the presence of god uh, verse 6 says may the king's rule be refreshing like spring rain on freshly cut grass and so this would be uh, truly like the dew that falls in the morning that's refreshing grass that has been um, in this day you know eaten overnight by um, by bugs may the king's rule be refreshing like spring rain on this freshly cut grass may the presence of god saturate us to our to every dimension of our being that's one of the benefits that we receive from the coming of jesus is to be able to be found regularly in the presence of god that god's presence would be you know, would be with his people and would uh, would refresh us and cause us to flourish and there's even an emphasis there in verse five when it's talking about uh, the fear of the lord throughout all generations some some different uh, translations add that throughout all generations and so the the focus there uh, involves both the commitment personally and individually to put the Lord first in all things, that we would all individually fear the Lord, but that we have a responsibility to transfer the fear of the Lord to the generations to come, mm -hmm. down to the, the the children in our family and, and, as, and as a church to raise up the next generation in the fear of the Lord. And as it ends there in verse 7, the godly flourished through his reign. For the Israelites, righteousness and just government were indivisible. They were one and the same. From, from blessing upon the land and ecology. So a community which lives according to righteousness, the expectation then would be that they enjoy internal harmony and prosperity, both in, in uh, their crops that they sow and also in their animals that they're raising. So as they, the, the trust is as we fear God, he will provide what we need and provide, and, and he'll bless the things that he's given us to yeah. steward. Absolutely. Let's skip on down to verse 18 and 19. Or Solomon concludes by saying, Praise the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does such wonderful things. Praise his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. And so here Solomon is finishing out with by focusing on Jesus, recognizing there is one who will fulfill all of these things. There is only one who can do these things, and it is Jesus. And it is through thinking about Jesus and focusing on Jesus that he is moved to praise. And the same is true for us, that when we think about Jesus, when we let Jesus take hold of our hearts, when we think about who he is and what he has done and what he will do um, in ourselves, and then as we Guard ourselves with the responsibility to share Jesus with the coming generation and with those around us. Let that move us to praise today. Praise you, God, the God of Israel. You alone do such wonderful things. You alone are the defender of the weak. You alone reign with righteousness. Let this blessing cover the whole earth, and we can look forward to the day when every knee bows and every tongue confesses that this Jesus, this Messiah that Solomon is speaking out, is the Lord. Absolutely. So when we fix our eyes on Jesus, he is the one that makes all of this even possible. He's the one that makes us righteous with God. He's the one that helps us and, and shapes us and conforms us into his image. He's the one that fills us with the Holy Spirit, gives it to us as a gift so we can walk in step with the Spirit, and we can embody who Jesus is in this world, that we can be a part of bringing justice through uh, his righteousness in, in all the areas that we're a part of. And also it, it ends with that every name, every name would praise the lord and so it's it's commending it's committing those of us who have who are in right standing with christ that we would be praying for those who are not that we would not forget mm -hmm. anybody that does not know jesus and that that the reason we bring righteousness into the areas that god's given us influence is so that people would come to know jesus and be changed so father we thank you for jesus mm -hmm. we put our eyes on jesus 
Help us to remember who he is, what he's done, and what you have done through him for us and to us and by us, that we would live and walk in step with him today. God, give us the wisdom and the words to speak. Give us the presence of mind to act on your behalf. God, will we love the way you love and will we uh, remember who you are? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have an awesome day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.